Hey guys, welcome back. Back, 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 back. The shuffle in the garage. Hey, look what we got here. The 2024 CX90. And we gotta do some recalls. Yeah, more recalls. <laughs> nah, Joe. Hey, it's okay. Settle down. We'll get through this. We'll get through. She understands. Yeah. So uh, I got two recalls. Okay. And I got two pieces of paper here. Um, and there's a lot more pages to these recalls than these two papers. But you know, uh, I had a comment a while back. You know, how can you throw 23 pages on the dashboard or the hood of a CX-90 and you only got three recalls. Well, I mean, there's a lot more pages to a recall than just one, you know. So, uh, we are going to get through this recall. Just ignore that. Okay, we got two recalls, all right? So, let's get into these. <laughs> This thing says, the status announced in EMDCS means letters to the owners have not been mailed out. So, you know, they haven't been mailed, you know, mailed out any letters as of right now um, to the owners of these vehicles that there's a recall, you know. So you may have not gotten your letter if you own one of these vehicles. That's okay. It's coming. Um, but it also says uh, it does not mean do not repair, you know. This vehicle is actually owned by World Car. It is a uh, lot vehicle in stock unit and it has come through to get uh, its used car inspection done. And um, we have to do the recall um, before it can be sold. And this vehicle only has about 10,000 miles on it. And uh, I'll, I'll show you where it says, you know, announced and not announced or, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, this recall is for a uh, current, current production of a CX-90 and a CX-70. Yeah, CX-70 also has this issue. And uh, this is uh, recall 7024J. And uh, I'll put all the information about these recalls in the description box below. Now, I want to tell you one thing. Um, for some reason, YouTube has just like, they're just taking away my descriptions. I don't know why. I uh, put a video out and like 24 hours later, my descriptions are completely gone. I don't know exactly when they leave or whatever, <laughs> but, and, and why, I have no idea. And so if you are going into one of my videos and you look in the description box and there's nothing there except, you know, my email address and uh, a link to Shop Foreman Garage uh, uh, Facebook page or whatever, if, if that's all that's there, it's because YouTube took that away. I always put information in the description. Sometimes it's small information, sometimes it's a lot. Uh, so if and, and i have no idea they don't tell me that i gotta go back and look you know so it's to the point where i'm having to save my description so that i can go back and put it back in and that's not the only thing that's missing from um <laughs> from my videos but you know it's, it's something that, that youtube i don't know why they do it i have no idea i blame them it, it just disappears anyway if you see that you know and there's no description you know then uh, put a comment down because i do see the comments Whenever y'all put comments down, I like to read the comments. I try and, and uh, you know, either give you a thumbs up or a heart or, you know, just, uh, you know, put some kind of information in there if you're asking for information. You know, I always try and get back to all comments. You know, I love the comments. Anyway, let's get back to this. Uh, um, but, uh, oh yeah, so, you know, put in the description, hey, you're de or uh, put in the comments, your description is missing, I'll see that and then I can go back in and put the description back, you know. So, I'll put all this information into the description so you can look at the uh, the VIN breakdown and you can see if uh, your vehicle is, is covered under this. Uh, you're going to get a, a letter anyway, but 
Uh, it's, you know, no harm to look. Um, these are both ECU reprogramming. So we're gonna be do spending some time over at the MDARS and do some reprogramming. Uh, so this one is uh, 7024J and it's a uh, multiple ECU's programming is what they say. Uh, oh, let me see, uh, this is uh, for PHEV and, um, and MHEV. Um, this one's not, why isn't it giving me a description? What, what's multiple ECU's uh, be affected by more uh, concerns? Um, okay, I, obviously it looks to me like they don't even know what all the concerns are, are going on with this. Concern one, repair outline PHEV vehicles. So A and B, flow chart, that's gonna be a lot of stuff we're gonna have to go through on this. So, uh, and this one is uh, 7124J. And I can tell you right now, this one is for an operable defroster and seatbelt warning light. And this one is also for 2000 or 2024, 2025 CX90, and the 2025 CX70. Um, they both uh, are for the 2025 CX70. This one's uh, just for 2024 CX90. Um, so uh, let's get into these recalls. Let's go through them and see what they deal with, why we gotta do them, what's going on. Uh, one of them uh, said something about a crash or something. Uh, crash? No, that, that can't be right. Okay, here is the repair order and these are the two repair recall campaigns that we're looking at. Uh, one deals with the defroster and seatbelt. The other one is multiple ECU's programming and we're going to get into that. This is a VIS. I don't know if uh, you've ever seen a VIS on your vehicle. Um, right down here this uh, gives you um, or lets the technician and everybody know when the um, uh, warranty starts, basic warranty, powertrain, uh, perforation uh, adjustments, uh, federal emissions, and all that other stuff. Uh, down below here, this is uh, uh, campaigns, or recalls, and uh, you may recognize some of these. We've uh, uh, done a video on these three right here. Increase in steering effort, warning light, and uh, check engine light, DTCs, VCM programming, and it shows the date uh, that they were started. It shows that it's closed, meaning they've already been done. These are the two new ones right here on the bottom. The 7024J, 7124J, and right here it says announced, right? It doesn't say open, it doesn't say close, it just says announced. Okay, let's move on to this first one. And this is just a, a cover sheet, all right? Um, so this is a 7024J. And right here it says the status announced in EMDCS means letters to the owners have not been mailed. It does not mean do not repair, proceed with the repair of the vehicle. Basically the vehicle comes in and it says announced, you still have to do the repair and uh, for good reason too. Um, <clears throat> this one right here, um, you know, um, Mazda Canada, US territories are also included. And this um, uh, is, uh, there are uh, 66,856 vehicles in this campaign in the U.S. and U.S. territories. And what's this concern for the 7024J? Well, there's three different concerns. So, concern run one, and uh, it's a repair for a um, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, which is what we have right now. Uh, certain subject vehicles, uh, loss of motor power may occur in the EV mode and proper software and the inverter uh, may result in activating a uh, fail-safe mode and limit the motor power in EV mode. In this condition, a malfunction indicator light may illuminate and warning chime may sound. Uh, the loss of motor and we go to the next page, motor power while driving may increase the risk of crash. Um, the repair is a software update uh, to the inverter. And concern two, 
uh, which covers the mild hybrid electric vehicle. Uh, that should be the inline six uh, turbocharged with the uh, you know uh, hybrid boost. Uh, on certain subject vehicles, the engine may not restart while idling from an auto stop. Idle, basically idle stop and go condition. In this condition, uh, the engine warning light uh, will illuminate a hybrid system malfunction. Message will appear and a warning chime may sound causing the engine to stall. Failure to restart the engine from an idle may increase risk of crash. The repairs of software up uh, software update um, to the PCM, powertrain control module, and battery energy control module. And concern three uh, is uh, repair outlined for the mild hybrid electric vehicle and the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. So it's on both of them. Um, on certain subject vehicles, malfunction indicator light may illuminate and a loss of power may occur under certain driving conditions potentially activating a fail-safe mode that limits power this could increase the risk of crash the repair is a software update to the powertrain control module uh, and engine control module so that those are just the cover sheets this is the actual um, information about doing the update for 7024J uh, and uh, so this information right here uh, is a breakdown of the VIN and I'll put this information in the description box so you can uh, get your VIN and put it up against this to see if you have it uh, because if the letters haven't come out yet that doesn't mean you can't get it done. You go to your dealership, they run a VIS, it shows up there, then they have to do it, okay? So, um, uh, I mean, this is basically what we're gonna be doing. There's a flow chart here, uh, which talks about, it's, uh, uh, we got a program the following ECUs in MDARS and, um, in this one, we, we're going to be reprogramming the drive motor control module, and then we're going to be reprogramming programming the PCM. When we reprogram the PCM, then uh, it's also going to reprogram the PCM, ECM, and TCM all together. Whenever you reprogram the TCM, then you need to do a um, TCM relearn procedure. We've done that in one of them. That's when you sit there and the thing starts making a bunch of noise, shifting back and forth. So. We'll get into this. Uh, this basically um, just uh, is the procedure, um, and it tells me how to get into the uh, system, which system I'm going to do first, and then and all that stuff. And I mean, it goes all the way through to uh, telling me to make sure that uh, you know the software that I got the right software in, and it depends on which vehicle you're doing and uh, what software it should be. Um, and what uh, it, it'll even show you, you know, the software you had, the software that's, that's new after doing it. Uh, upload the ODR data, we got to do that. Um, this will e even talks about doing the transmission updates and stuff. So we'll get into this. Um, so this is the other one. Okay, 7124J. And basically, all this stuff says the same thing. Uh, owners have not been uh, mailed. The, the letters to the owners have not been mailed. So I, um, I think earlier I said that they've been mailed to you. Uh, I was wrong about that. It says it has not been mailed yet. If the status says announced. Anyway, okay. So, um, and, and like it says, it does not mean do not repair. So we need to repair them if, if they come in. This one um, deals with uh, safety emissions recall, uh, an operative defroster and SEPA warning light on certain subject uh, vehicles during uh, vehicle startup. An error may occur. If this happens, malfunction indicator lamp may illuminate and a loss of power may occur under certain driving conditions, increasing the risk of crash. The repair is a software update uh, to the dash uh, electrical supply unit and there are eight eighty thousand nine hundred and seventeen vehicles in this campaign in the u.s and u.s territories 
Um, and this uh, right here is a breakdown and it's the same thing as this right here. And I'll put this in the description. I'm sorry, my um, printer is, just kind of went crazy. I don't know what this, this just does not look clean. But um, yeah, so um, this is just going to be another uh, reprogram and it's basically the same thing. We got a um, flow chart here. In some situations, uh, there may be a code set or you might not be able to uh, get um, a um, access or, or um, communication with the certain modules and they want you to pull a fuse out, put the fuse back in and then uh, go back into it. It's kind of like, you know, just turn it off and turn it back on and see if it works. All right, so, and this is basically the same thing. Same thing as the other one. We're gonna go through all this stuff and uh, do our reprogram. This talks about taking the fuse out and putting it back in if you can't gain communication to it. Um, and uh, as far as I could see, there were no lights on on this uh, dashboard or anything on this vehicle. So uh, hopefully, we do not have any any uh, issues so let's get into it well truth going on and being told it's the next day I just can't get away sometimes so right now we got the machine hooked up we got MDARS hooked up right here to the thing I got it I got it running um, trying to warm up the transmission because we're gonna have to do a transmission relearn procedure and uh, it has to be top operating temperature uh, just so y'all know on these uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles if you for some reason want to uh, just run the engine uh, if you open the hood and uh, start the vehicle the engine will start up uh, with the hood open um, and on the uh, the mild hybrid, you know those, you know, you automatically start the engine start up. Uh, on these plug-in hybrids, it's an actual, you know, runs like a normal hybrid. So you're running off the hybrid system until the engine, you know, wants to start up and stuff like that. But if you open the hood, uh, it'll it'll start up. Um, I do have uh, the the battery uh, charger hooked up. Oh, let me show you this. So get around this door so I do have the battery charger hooked up right here and this is how I have it hooked up oh now my light doesn't want to stay on again so anyway so I have the battery charger hooked up and going and uh, I am warming up the transmission. Let's see. Let's see where we are. So this is MDARS and I have it pulled up right here and it looks like everything's good and clear. I don't really have any codes except for right here in the BCM, right? So if I click on the BCM, then it's showing me uh, it's a low tire pressure. So that's what that that's what that uh, code is for. And I've already adjusted the tire pressures in this thing, but uh, we just haven't driven it. So um, we can go ahead and clear that code and we, we will eventually. Uh, what I wanna do is go into the toolbox right here and go into the data logger. So I'm going to run the data logger and just uh, original setup. And I'm gonna do a search for the TCM, for transmission control module, TCM. There it is right there. Bring that open. And it automatically fills in all the data for the TCM, but I don't need all this. So I'm just gonna push it out. And what I do need, I'm gonna do a search right here for TFT, TFT. And what that is, a transmission fluid temperature. So there's the TFT, I'll move that over here and then I'm going to hit the start button. And this should bring up my uh, transmission fluid temperature. So there we are, we got uh, 95, 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And so we need to get it to, um, we're looking at around 221 degrees Fahrenheit, um, 140, 
five degrees Celsius uh, for my Canadian friends. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. I don't know. I'm not good at this translation of languages. So, um, yeah, let me get this thing up to operating temperature. I don't need it at operating temperature to do the first program or do the program, but I do need it at operating temperature uh, to do uh, the transmission relearn after we do the um, TCM reprogram, which is part of the PCM, ECM, TCM. And that's actually gonna be the second um, one we do. The first one we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this, um, I believe it's this one, the uh, 7124J. So we're gonna be uh, doing that program first because it's just one program. And then we're gonna go to the 7024J because uh, we got uh, a couple different ECUs um, reprogramming to do so and get this thing up to operating temperature and then we'll start so uh, I'll bring you back for that okay right now I'm sitting at 130 degrees Fahrenheit so I read the thing wrong of course um, like I said I'm not very good at this translating <laughs> languages but it said uh, like 45 degrees Celsius to 105 degrees Celsius which is like 113 degrees Fahrenheit to 221 degrees Fahrenheit so we're at 130 so we're there I'm sitting here revving the engine trying to get it to 221 degrees and that's that absolutely ridiculous so I went back and read it and I was like you know of course you know I didn't read it right so uh, let's move on I'm gonna uh, turn this off so it turn that off get out of this data logger and I'm going to go right here that little car with the dog bone wrench above it and software upgrade that's what we're gonna go to I'll turn this key on and I'll turn off the headlights because we don't need them and uh, okay, and now for some reason I need to check this. It's saying that the battery's low right here on the bottom. Well, the battery shouldn't be low. Oh, okay. I think what happened, because I was running the vehicle so long, this thing is freaking out. Like, uh, make sure both cables are connected. And this is the best that I can connect these cables. This one popped off. And I know you probably can't see that. So there it is. So now it's charging again. We want to definitely make sure that that battery does not run low or anything like that because uh, then we're going to have some, some issues. So the key's still on. And see the little low battery thing is gone. So I'm going to go into the software update. And I'm going to hit run right there. And what I'm looking for, and this is the 7124J, and what we're programming, this uh, is where it goes into the thing. It asks if there are any warning lamps. No, there aren't any warning lamps. The only warning lamp we had was the uh, TPMS, uh, you know, and that's it. Uh, so if there aren't any warning lamps, then we're gonna go down to the dash ECU by MDARS reprogram. And uh, so we'll go straight to that. And of course, this is gonna, let's see. Um, tells you to hook up the MDAR, which we already have, and go into the software. This right here is where it starts to tell you if there's any warning lamps on. You know, no, we don't have any warning lamps. So we go to step four. If there were warning lamps on, then it goes and tells you how to disconnect this fuse right here. And um, so we don't need to do that. We just go straight to step four, uh, program the ECU, uh, select dash ECU. So that's what we're gonna do. But I wanted to show you then this. Let's see if I can find it now. Uh, this is going through all the programming and all that stuff. Then after doing the program, then they tell you, do not choose ESU make sure to choose dash ESU, you know, after we've gone through all this. So if you accidentally made a mistake and picked the wrong one, 
Um, I don't know, you could have issues maybe, I have no idea. So right now I am going to scroll to dash ESU right there. So I'll click on that. It is checking to see if there are any updates. And it shows the current update, our current version that's in there. And the required version uh, definitely needs to be updated. So we're gonna, I'm going to hit next right here. And have you checked the dealer letters and stuff? Do you understand what's involved? Yes, it always asks that stuff. Okay, so now it's downloading the program. Hit next. Then ask you a bunch of other questions, you know, is the engine off and ready off, you know, is the key on, uh, battery voltage, um, so um, uh, you make sure the battery is hooked to the thing, yeah, it's hooked to the thing, make sure that the PC power supply is hooked in, yeah, PC power supply is hooked in right here, so we click all the checks, hit next. And now it is doing the software update and this may take a while. like it has been completed. It says complete right there. I'm uh, gonna hit next. And this is basically showing us the software that we put into it. And the version, version that was in it, the version that's in it now, which is the right stuff. So <clears throat> this one we're done. We're done with. Um, and we've basically, this is basically, is just showing us, you know, everything that we've just did on this. And there's a lot of paper here. And basically what they're saying is if, uh, if you had a, uh, uh, an error that happened, what you can do, you can go back and, um, you know, how to get through that, how to reprogram it again, how to try again. And, uh, <clears throat> what we can do I'm gonna set that back there so usually what we'll do is go back to this quick check we are going to clear the codes uh, code set we don't I don't have to do this because I have another program to do uh, usually at this point we would go and uh, and collect the ODR data send that to Japan so that uh, they know that we did this but uh, we still have uh, more programming to do. So once I'm done with that, then I'll, I'll get through that and get that done. Let's see if this is checking and it shows that we have a code. Yeah, and this is normal. Uh, ECM, uh, ECM engine timer uh, performance. This always sets whenever you do these programs. And I think it has to do with the uh, vehicle sitting with a key on for a too long period of time. Uh, you cycle the key, start it up, turn it off, turn the key back on, and uh, usually that code will uh, clear or it will go from active to history. Um, but uh, we're not gonna worry about that right now. I am going to, um, I'm going to go to the next one. Um, so we just wanted to make sure that we didn't have any code set in, uh, in that dash ESU, um, and, and we don't. Uh, we basically have uh, these two codes, ECM and PCM have the codes. It's the same code, it's the engine timer. Um, so we're just gonna move on to the next thing, and that is this one. And this one, we're gonna do a couple different programs. Uh, we're gonna start with the SGC2. It's a uh, drive uh, motor control module. Uh, 
um, and then we will go on to the PCM and whenever we program the PCM it's going to automatically program the PCM, ECM and TCM all together and then of course you know after programming the TCM then that's when we need to do the transmission relearn procedure so following this right here um, get to the section we need to get to and of course we're going to go back into the software so we'll go to the toolbar software updates i'm going to run that again and the first thing we're going to do is select the sg sg2 uh, c2 dmcm um, and start programming um, so let's see if i can find it in here PCM or, or SG2C is that one right there so I'm gonna click on that and it's basically the same thing it's gonna check your um, the current version versus the required version and yeah we're going from B to C so we definitely need to do the update so hit next and Make sure that, you know, I am a dealer and I do understand what's involved. So it's going to do the download. Downloads it. Hit next. And same thing, you know, is the key on? Is the battery voltage good? Is the, we got the um, battery charger hooked up? Is the PC power supply hooked up? Yes, it is. Go down here. Hit next. And same thing. This may take a while. Okay, so that part is done. Let's hit next. Showing uh, what was uh, put into it, what the previous version was, what the current version is, which is what we just put in there. And I'm gonna hit finished. And so now we're done with the SG2 C2 DMCM blah 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 stuff and so we need to reprogram the PCM um, and um, careful about the behavior of the MDARS uh, reprogramming an ECU depending on the programming ECU ignition on ignition off may repeat several times yeah we've seen that um, uh, if the current version of the DMC and oh it, it it went in it it was right so we are going to go to the PCM now and the PCM will program the PCM ECM and let me just try this type PCM there it is powertrain control module gonna hit next it's checking the versions And there's uh, and it's showing the version of the the current version of the PCM the new version the current version of the ECM and the new version and then the TCM which is gonna automatically program it says no updates are available for TCM it's gonna program whatever it needs to program so I'm gonna click next I'm going to this program and then I'm gonna read <coughs> so it says that there's no uh, update for the TCM. I think, and I'm not exactly sure. So I think that it's gonna program the TCM anyway. It's gonna go in and it's gonna program probably whatever version is still in it. I, I think that it wipes it and programs it. I may be completely wrong about that. So I'm gonna read this. But in the meantime, uh, we are going to program the PCM and the ECM um, because that's what this thing is gonna do. So right now, we're downloading the flash flashes for them, uh, PCM and ECM, and 
this chicken, uh, same stuff. We got the battery hooked up and all this good stuff. PCM, uh, PC power supply. Um, hit next. And then this may take a while. Okay, and it looks like that is complete. <clears throat> Shows that, uh, same stuff, you know, what we put in. Um, and we did not program the TCM. Uh, apparently it didn't need it. It was already uh, updated to the latest and greatest. So, because of that, we don't have to do the transmission relearn. So, warming up the transmission fluid temperature, you know, it's all for nothing. Um, but um, uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to turn, turn it off, I'm start it up, and it is a PHEV, you know, but uh, the, the hood is open, so it started the engine. Uh, make sure everything's off here, turn it off, turn the key on. And this is just to get that that uh, thing where you know it hasn't been started in a while. Oh, look, I'm, oh, I'm getting caught up on everything. Great. So let's see if we lost communication. Hopefully not. Um, go to the quick check. I'm going to hit um, the um, clean the car, clear the codes, clear any codes that are in there. Close completed and recheck it. See if anything pops up. Come on. Okay, and we got green lights all across the board. So that's pretty much it for that. So uh, the next thing and last thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that uh, the ODR data is sent to um, Japan. So I am going to go back to this where it shows this software update and scroll to the bottom where the vehicle history right there. All the way over here where it says run it's gonna check it and it says the status is successful so um, during the those updates um, every single one of them it did the update and then after that it sent the data and then it did the update and then it sent the data um, so there was a screen a thing that scrolled across doing the update then there was a thing that scrolled across sending the data and all this is doing is just uh, checking to see if the data was sent and it was sent if that uh, didn't say success right there then i'd have to go in and manually send it you know but we don't have to do that everything is good uh no code set uh so i'm gonna turn the key off Make sure the thing starts up and runs <laughs> and drives. So uh, check that out. So 
check this out. <laughs> this is something that uh, that I've noticed happening uh, more often than I mean. It, it's just weird. I mean, I understand it, um, but. Uh, a lot of times these vehicles, uh, you know, they come in, uh, the service advisor parks the vehicle usually, you know, in the back lot and brings the repair order to the technician or, you know, to me. And um, I come out to pull the vehicle in. And uh, so look at this right here. Okay, so this is the shifter. Right. And if you have one of these, you understand how this thing works. It is in park to put it in reverse you move it over that's reverse that's drive right and a normal shifter that would be park <laughs> but that's not that's reverse you got to bring it over to have it in park so i'll come out to the vehicle the vehicle will, the key will be turned off right and but it's not in park it's in reverse and if you turn the key off like that, it automatically sets the parking brake. So that's a good thing because when I first picked up this vehicle, it was out on the front lot, the, our front lot. And as you probably uh, have noticed, it's a big hill that goes down towards the highway. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing that uh, parking brake sets because this vehicle was in reverse. And the key is off. It even tells you uh, anti roll away engaged, uh, move gear selector to park. But uh, it, people, salesmen, who, who knows, uh, service advisors, they don't pay attention to that. They just put the thing in reverse, turn the key off, and get out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, that's and, and it went away. You know, so there's nothing there. You know, if I walked away right now, the vehicle would be perfectly fine. The parking brake is on. No lights have left on or left on or anything like that. But the thing is still in reverse. You know, I got to move it to park. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's just uh, uh, something that I wanted to show you. It's it's kind of funny. Um, but uh, I mean, it, it could be dangerous too. <laughs> so make sure that thing is in park. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, I know that uh, this is kind of boring ECU upgrades, you know, but it, they are recalls and they need to be done. And uh, hopefully I've gone over enough of the information so that you can understand why this needs to get done. And if you own one of these vehicles, I know you want to get it done so bring it in let's get it done uh cx90 cx70 and um the uh, uh all, all the information i will try and put it all into the description box below so you can check your vehicle to see if it has it um like i uh, was, was showing you there's a lot of vehicles that um this uh, is affecting so um you know get her done you know, and even uh, if it if it doesn't say that it's an open campaign on your VIS, like the sheet said, that doesn't mean you don't do it. You still need to get it done, and don't let the dealership tell you, "Hey, it's not. It doesn't. You know, say you know it's it's open or whatever. You know, don't, don't let them tell you that." So, uh, show them this video. <laughs> but uh, I think I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. Thank you for watching so much. If you haven't liked and subscribed, do that right now. And I will see you in the next one.